So I would just encourage everyone to find something that inspires them, a verse, a scripture verse, a song, a worship song, a quote, a poem, anything that when you're on the peak of the mountain or in the deepest valley, that you can use that in your life. You know, for me, I use Jeremiah 29, 11, where I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you a future, to give you hope, not to harm you. I just really clung to that scripture. I have it in my office. I have it in my home. I have it anywhere I need it so that I can refer back to it, even though, you know, it's written on my heart as well. And so when you're going through something really difficult, I just encourage you to embrace it. Embrace the journey, embrace what you're going through and know that the Lord walks with you, that when you come out on the other side, you know that he has been with you during those tough times. And I just, I really encourage you, instead of fighting through the dark times, through the tough times, if you'll embrace it and say, hey, I'm here for it, I'm, I'm digging in, I'm going deep, then when you come out on the other side, it'll be that much more of a victory in your life. Hi, and welcome to another episode of I Refresh, where we are ordinary women doing extraordinary things through the power of prayer and God's word. And I want to welcome our guest today. She is a um, wonderful friend of mine, and now we are related by family because uh, we have kids that are married to each other. Uh, this is Jody Davis. She is the owner and operator of Accent Moving Storage and Logistics. And um, this is a multi-generational company that she has inherited, and I want her to share a little bit about um, that background, that transition period, and just how I'm amazed that she is taking something that was inherited and has just grown it substantially. Thank you so much, Laura, for having me today. I'm really honored to um, be a guest. So. As a third generation owner of a business, it's been a really interesting journey. So Accent was started in 1939. My grandparents, Seth and Leela Davis, had the business. They were um, one truck, one employee in the office, and it was just super basic. In, when my dad was 28, he decided to go into the business after he had served in the Marine Corps. So he and my mom joined my grandparents in the business and took over in 1976 when my grandfather passed away. And then the story goes where <laughs> us kids started getting involved in our business. So honestly, I started working for my parents when I was 12. Oh man. I know. So in the day, there was a paper shortage. It was super expensive for pulp and paper. And my dad at 12 years of age had me come in to the warehouse and when people would unpack their boxes, I would take the paper and spread it out. <laughs> and then the crews would take that paper for the next day. The next year when I was 13, I got a promotion and I became a packer. So when people were getting ready to move and they had our crews come in to prepare the house to move, I was one of the packers that came into the home and helped box everything up. So I was a packer from 13 all the way through college. Oh, man. And so that was my foray into the moving business with my parents. So. And what I'm hearing too is you're, you're, they were into recycling before it became a <laughs> Exactly. <big thing>. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of impressive. Yeah. And the other thing that's impressive, and I think you, I've heard you share this before, is when you look at the history of multi-generational companies or when someone inherits a company, just the percentage that tend to be ongoing is very small. Right, right. So typically a family business only lasts for 24 years. 
and clearly ours is 80 plus years old. Mm -hmm. Once you start passing down through generations, when a business gets to a third generation, only 3% of those businesses are successful. And so I feel really honored and privileged that we have you know, been a success story. We're part of that 3%. And then also another fun fact is in a family business, 24% of the family businesses are female owned. So I'm super proud of the fact that we're a hundred percent women owned oh, yes. business. So. Yes. Not only, uh, you know, women owned, but just that you've been able to take it and grow it and just kind of change with the times, like with the pandemic, with everything else, you were able to kind of transition and find areas that had a need and had a purpose Absolutely. and uh, just kind of restructure and change it a little bit. Absolutely. You know, when everything kind of started closing down a couple of years ago, we actually ramped up and we were very, very fortunate because over the years, if we were still only moving a customer from house A to house B, we would not be in business. We went through some really challenging times. You know, different times in the economy have affected us in different ways. I will never forget um, when 9-11 happened. We had trucks that were full going to various trade mm -hmm. shows. Well, those trade shows immediately shut down and those trucks were just all over the United States and they had to come back. And we hit a really low, clearly we all remember, economic times, yeah. you know, following that in the years. And then again in 2008, we had uh, really hard economic times and it really impacted the moving and storage industry. So we have spent time diversifying. We were already kind of a diversified moving company anyway, but we've taken risk and we've taken opportunities that have come our way and I have an amazing staff. I, I have to say it is, it is a um, honor to have two people specifically that have worked at our business for 40 years that have stayed yeah. with me and to have that knowledge and that wisdom and that influence and that support is the only reason we have, you know, been successful. And there have been times that I would say we weren't successful and you, we had to really look at things and really have the hard conversations. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, in all honesty, through prayer and through faith, we just kept pushing forward. Yeah. Never, yeah. never felt like there was another way, you know, mm -hmm. just keep going. And I think that's a big key is just even in the process and even in those times is just still seeking the Lord and asking for direction and asking for wisdom and, you know, what Absolutely. the next steps and, and uh, he is faithful to always order those steps. Absolutely. And I love that you can look back over your journey and kind of see all the times he's directed sure. and ordered your steps. And you talked about a challenge with the business and, you know, with recession and pandemic and everything else. But I think, uh, were there other challenges you had as well? Because you have family, Absolutely. you volunteer, you know, you're always at the kids' sporting events and everything else. So if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit with us in regards to the other challenges you might sure. have had. So I'll take you back. Um, when I was in college, okay. I was dating my boyfriend who was more local and decided um, that I was more interested in boyfriend than college and ended up with mono and didn't go back my second semester of my junior year. Okay. Well, my parents were super frustrated with me, especially my father. And he said, you cannot come work for us. And so at the time I was in college to be an, I was an education major. And so I had really thought I'm going to go ahead and go a different direction. But coming home, clearly I didn't have a degree and my father was super upset with me. So he said, you can't work for me. You have to pay me rent. And you're going to have to pay some grocery money for this boy that keeps coming over and eating at our house. <laughs> so I got a job at Steak and L. Do you remember Steak and yes, L? Yes, I do. So oh. I was a hostess. I didn't want to be a waitress, but I was a hostess. And after working there for a little bit, then my father, Jack, came to me and he said, hey, I really need you to come work from like 7 a.m. to 10. And then you can go to Steak and L. Sure. So I would go into the office, help in our operations department, go to Steak and Ale. Then he said, can you come back after Steak and Ale and work that shift 
between lunch and dinner. And so I would go to the office, go to State Canal, go to the office, go to State Canal because my boyfriend was in college. You know, he was still on the right path, mm -hmm. right? So all the while paying rent, end up getting married. But kind of really the cool story is that when I went to get married, by that time my father had said, you can work for me full time. You know, please come join us in the business and, and we'll move you to different positions, give you opportunities within the company. So when I got married, my parents handed me a check for all of the rent I had paid. Aww, and so I love that. It, was, it was a really great growing opportunity because I was kind of frustrated with them for that. But the lesson at the end of it, which was probably about a year and a half, was really good and so I appreciated that they had the forethought to do that for me and so of course got married had a couple of kids well in 1997 I found myself in the middle of a divorce and my father came to me the same year and said I'm ready to retire and the same year we got approached by our van line because we are an agent from Mayflower okay and they asked me, asked us to open up another branch. And I was 27, two kids that were a toddler and a baby, a dad who wanted to retire. And I really, in all honesty, thought I was going to lose my mind. And, and, and I'm not making fun of that. No, I am not it's... trivializing that. I seriously sat with the counselor and said, I think we need to talk about what we need to do with me. And he said, I just want to tell you you're okay. And he's a professor at ORU. He's okay. a wonderful gentleman. And he said, you're okay, Jody. you really are. I know you think that you're losing your mind right now, but you're not. And you're way ahead of the game. And so with working with him and my parents who were very thoughtful and understanding during that time. I spent the next two years officing in the same office with my father. So I moved in, we had two desks, and you gotta remember in from 97 to 99, it wasn't like it is now. Internet was different, everything mm -hmm. was just a little different. Yes. So we sat desk to desk, I went to all his meetings, I traveled with him. I did everything I possibly could while he transitioned out and I transitioned in. And it was an amazing two years of being able to work with him and have the support. My mom was still in the business. She stayed in the business for many years. Um, she ended up being diagnosed with cancer. And so she stayed with me as long as she could. And But when my father, in on January 1st, he walked out the door. <laughs> he was he done. He said, I'm done. He packed up the office and he walked out. <laughs> and I was 30, I wasn't even 30 years old at that time. Still two young girls, mm -hmm. single mom. And I tell you what, um, I, I don't know how people navigate life altering situations without the Lord. I guess so it true. really makes sense why we see so much alcoholism and drug abuse and suicide. And, I, I, because there were so many times that you just felt so helpless and all I had was my faith. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even though my parents and my sister and my family were so supportive, it's still, you know, in, in the middle of the night, it's just you and God. It is. And, you know, even you mentioned having your family, having your, your dad, your sister, it's, it takes me back to Moses where you, sometimes you have to have people helping you absolutely to press through and to hold your hands and to lift you up. But yes. at the end of the day, you're the one standing and right. you're the one contending for what it is the Lord has for you and where he wants to take you and right. what he wants to do with it. And you mentioned too, you were a um, single mom with two girls. And I have to say, my oldest is married to your youngest yes. daughter. So <laughs> I love your girls. I've known them for since they were yeah. little bitty. Uh, amazing girls and Thank you me. are definitely an amazing mom and I don't know how you did it but you talked you were running a business 
you were a single mom, you had these girls, but they were played every sport imaginable. Yes. And you, if at all possible, were at every sporting event. How did you find that balance between, you know, making them feel so valued and their definitely making sure they knew their worth yet running a successful business. Sure. So and taking care of yourself. <laughs> well, so I will say that, you know, I told my girls when they were young that when they grew up, the first round of therapy was going to be on me because <laughs> honestly, you know, I was doing the best I could. They were doing the best they could. We had a lot of support. Their dad was involved. Mm -hmm. I was very fortunate in that respect. My sister and her husband, Ryan, were amazing because for a while they didn't have children. And then even when they did have children, all of everyone was at Victory together. So I had a huge support network in, in that respect. But I am very fortunate that I had the ability to be where I needed to be when I needed to be there. Now, that's not to say I miss so many field trips. Yes. You know, during the work day was very hard and, and I really I really struggled with that of being the working mom. There were so many moms who weren't mm -hmm. and I felt like not a failure, but it just it bothered me that I wasn't there for all the class parties, for all of the field trips. You know, that was hard for me. But, you know, my girls seemed to understand. Mm -hmm. They just knew what our life was and they embraced it and were supportive. My girls have always been supportive of me. So it's not just me supporting them as their mother and trying to figure out how to do things, but you can ask them. We've been on trips where I'm like, do I need to get on a plane and fly home? Do I need to drive home? You know, thank goodness for cell phones because we would be at a national volleyball tournament in the middle of summer and I'm on the phone with a client out in the lobby or out in front of a gym and, you know, that is the negative is I sleep with my phone on. Yeah. I am 24 seven accessible and the girls have seen that and, and they know that it's just part of the gig. It's part of our life. And so I feel really fortunate that I guess because they were raised in it, they didn't know differently mm -hmm. that yeah. we just, we did what we could. And, you know, in the volunteering thing, super important to me. So for years, I was in the Rotary Club of Tulsa, and every Christmas, that Rotary Club rings Salvation Army bells, and I would take the girls out of school to go wherever we signed up to ring Salvation Army bells. We did other volunteer things, especially through church, you know, in different serve capacities that we had, because I wanted them, I wanted to be an example, and I wanted them to see to, you know, much is given to us, much is required. required. We're not rich, it's not fancy, but we are still extremely blessed and very fortunate. And it's it's our job mm -hmm. to, to give back and to do what we can. And so my girls have sat through committee meetings and they've gone to golf tournaments where I volunteered and, you know, just, I wanted to walk the walk and I wanted them to see it. So not only in faith, but also in community service and also in business. And it hasn't always been pretty. It hasn't been perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, life is not always pretty and it life is, is never perfect. And I love that they were able to see not only what you were verbalizing, but also what you were walking out right. and just teaching them to support, um, to support you and to realize, okay, Finding that balance. Right. I think it's about finding balance. And I think you have found, you know, always found a good balance between <laughs> you have, you may not think it, but like, just like when you were talking about, it, you went to the counselor and he said, Jody, you're good. You're, you're way ahead of the game. You're yeah. way, I think we're harder on ourselves. Absolutely. Way harder on ourselves than other people are. But I think none of us are perfect, but I think you found a good balance of, okay, you know, just um, the time with the Lord and then just doing your business well and then supporting the girls and showing them how, um, you know, they could support you and just helping them understand that we are to love other people more than we love ourselves. And as you said, 
to whom much is given, much is required. Right. And it's just, you know, we're not given things to just hold on to and just right. kind of hoard, but we're given things to share and to grow and to give to others. And I think too, you've had um, a lot of opportunities to go share your story and to share your faith and um, just to kind of give your testimony. Is there any certain times that stand out to you sure. where it was just kind of, you Absolutely. know, those memorable moments? Right, you know, and it's, I'm one of those kids that was raised in church. And so I don't have this fantastic testimony road to Damascus experience, <laughs> right? Like I very vividly remember being five years old in my bed in our house on 28th Street here in Tulsa and giving my heart to the Lord. It was after church one night and I just remember coming home from church and then just simply telling my mom, I gave my heart to Jesus, you know, and it was very very simple but the 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 journey hasn't been simple right and so when you're going through super hard things in life i will never forget i um happened to go to church one night two little girls in tow it was cold it was miserable why am i dragging these kids to church and sitting there and teachers that taught at school when i was um, at victory christian were in front of me and we were just talking and having a conversation and this lady said to me my husband was given this tape and he was driving down the road. yes cassette tape right cassette tape. <laughs> okay we're dating ourselves yes, this, but we're talking cassette tape yes so she said he's driving down the road and it was so powerful the worship music was so powerful he had to pull over and he just wept and i know this man he was the soccer coach he's this you know strong guy and so to think of him on the side of the road in his car listening and worshiping, I immediately went out and bought it. Well, what it was, was Shout to the Lord. It was the Hillsong um, cassette. And so I went through two of those, <laughs> wore them out. It was, it was, it, it just fed my soul. Good. It was, I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know how to, how to talk to God about what was going in my life, on in my life. All I knew was how to worship. And to me, that time in my life, sticks out. I have never felt more close to God than I did during that time when I basically had no words, only tears mm -hmm. and worship music. Yeah. And so that was a really big change for me. And that is for me when worship really came into my spiritual walk. You know, we sang hymns in church and we did sing some courses. Do you remember that? <laughs> yes. like sing the courses? You would sing some, not all, but right. some. Yes. Right. But kind of in that time period is when kind of a bigger shift happened in my, my home church and in my spiritual walk and in, in my life. And so that's when worship really became the foundation of when I don't know how to pray, when I don't know how to get through a situation, when words just don't come it's it's worship for me. Yeah. And I love that because it is so true because there are so many times to I I totally agree and I have done the same thing where you don't know what to pray or you don't know what to say and so sometimes just entering in into worship and I find too that sometimes I am so weary. Yes. It's like when I'm weary, it's like when it just, you know, all the demands, all the pulls which you know because you right. have many just the someone needing something, someone wanting something, and then wanting to be there for everybody else. And it's right. just just putting on that praise and worship. There's something about it that right. just fills your soul right. and just kind of brings that peace and just brings that just kind of yes. like a cleansing where it just kind of takes it away. Right. So, you know, and it's, it's for me, that worship music doesn't take me back to one of the darkest times in my life and make me sad it empowers me. I love it. Because it was it was one of the darkest times of my life and it did walk me through, you know, to the other side and it empowers me. And then kind of another time was in the early 2000s when my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. And there, I have to be honest, there wasn't a day I didn't believe my mom would not be physically mm. healed on this earth and survive breast cancer. I, my faith was just pure. I, I just thought we just are going to need to go through these treatments. It's going to be tough. It's going to be ugly, but it's going to come out on the other side. And I watched my mom work, walk this journey 
and she walked it in a different way than I would have walked it. And that was hard. Mm. Yeah. My mom is just an incredible prayer warrior. She's one of those women that when you're a little kid and you're outside playing and you come running in and you can't find your mom, it's because she's on her knees beside her bed praying because somebody from church called about something. And like she was a genuine definition of a prayer warrior. And so I just really felt like this is no big deal. Mm -hmm. It was a big deal. Mm. And I watched her walk that and I watched her, you know, question things in her life. You know, do I have sin? Is that why I'm not being healed? And, you know, those were really hard times. And so we walked this journey and we lost my mom in 2004 to breast cancer. And it was really hard. It was it was faith shaking, right? Yeah, I can't even imagine because it's one of those. I think you're almost like me a little bit when when you have such faith, there's just no question. There's right. just no doubt. It is just this is what it is. This is the way it's going to be. Right. And you you don't consider any other outcome. You don't right. consider any other right. situation. Yeah. And it was really interesting. One of her sisters was talking to me because she really struggled with it. And it was some time after my mom had passed. It wasn't immediate. And she just looked at me and said, Jody, I heard the Lord say to me, it's not yours to understand. And I don't know why that was such a release for me as well, but it, it released my aunt and the Lord just was like, you know, you're not going to understand everything, mm -mm. but trying to understand it, it's mine. And when I heard that and I embraced that, it just, it was one of those times that I was like, okay. All right, let's move on. Yeah. I can do this. I love yeah. that though. And I love how the Lord will bring those people across your path or bring those people that just, right. you know, you just sit down to talk to or text or call. Oh, and absolutely. it's like they'll have just that one nugget from the Lord that just brings freedom and brings release and For brings, sure. you know, just peace, yes. your peace back. And it's like, and, you know, I haven't lost, I've lost family. Yes. And it's just one of those things, learning to praise him, whether he heals them or praise them, whether he takes them home. Right. But it's like you said, it's, it's not for us to understand. Right. But, yeah. Right. Yeah. No. But I love the story with your aunt. That's pretty amazing. It so. is. It is. And, you know, and then as you fast forward years and years later, uh, we just lost her a year ago and she suffered with mm. Alzheimer's for about 15 years. And, you know, I think her journey and that loss, I had to say, this isn't mine to understand. And it's so funny how her words <laughs> came back mm -hmm. for me in her health journey, you know? And so you just, you just never, you never know. No. And I love that you recognize, and I think we have to be purposeful in recognizing, you know what, how good the Lord is because it's like for her to tell you that 15 years prior or how many years prior and then that same word is relevant all those years later right absolutely you know when she transitions right and so I just I love those stories I love those connections and I love those God moments yes yes and so I think too um as I'm kind of following your journey as you continue to grow and step into new giftings and step into new seasons he has you speaking a lot more at a lot of different situations, a lot of different positions. Are you seeing the Lord really kind of stretching you, growing Absolutely. you, pulling you into right. new giftings? Yes. And, you know, it's one of those things where for years, kind of after my divorce, I was like, I didn't go through this not to be able to help other women. You weren't validated. I mean, you didn't feel validated. Correct. That. Okay. Right. And so I was like, at some point, this story, this journey has got to be something that is encouraging or that allows me an opportunity for speaking to other people and into their lives that, hey, you know, this is rough stuff and, you know, there's no denying it. And it's not easy. And just because you have the Lord doesn't, isn't the magic no. miracle. Magic cure. solution. Right. Yes. Right. It is, you still put in the work, mm -hmm. even though you're putting in the work with the Lord. Right. Um, so just like your own physical self, if you want to feel better and look better, you got to put in the work. Well, it's the same in your spiritual life. 
if you want that, you have to put in the work. And so it's been an interesting walk the last year because I finally embraced and said yes <laughs> to the opportunities. And it has, I have really grown through it and really stepped outside my box. And in about 1996, I did Del Carnegie and I was pretty sure I was going to flunk out of public speaking. <laughs> and I made it through and passed the class. And then now all these years later to try to kind of pick up and, and start really talking and telling the story has been, it's been an incredible opportunity. I love it. And if I'm not mistaken, I think you're also taking that gift and teaching other people how to use it as well or kind of how to step into it. Mentoring other I I ladies. don't, I you know, I have had the opportunity to meet with some women and have some friendships that hopefully empower them if that's the direction they want to go to use their life experience to kind of mentor and talk with other women. So, yes, okay. a little bit. Probably not super organized, but... I have had um, some really great opportunities. I know you're getting ready to have another little granddaughter. Yes. You've got one already. She's cute as can be. So you're getting ready to have another one. Yes. So Bailey and Paul have Davis, who is two and a half. And Bailey's your oldest. Yes. yes. Okay. And she is going to have another little girl at the beginning of August. So they are just moving back to Tulsa from having been in Bartlesville for a season. And then, of course, Bria and Justin. Yes, are which is my oldest and her youngest. Yes, yes. Are just doing life and living to the fullest right now. And Yes, and who would have ever thought all those years ago we would end oh, up really <laughs> related by marriage. I, I mean, because uh, Bailey and Justin, both our oldest, were best friends like oh, all yeah. through school. And then... Even went to OSU Yes, together. even went to college and, together. Yes. And then for... Two of our kids to end up married. I'm like, okay, who would have ever thought that? Never. But I love, I love how the Lord works things out. I do too. So, and I love Justin. And I love, I man, love, and Justin. I love Bailey. I love yeah. your entire family. But yes, we are both very blessed to have wonderful kids. So, yes. and to watch our families grow. I know. Eventually. Hopefully yes. more. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, if you wouldn't mind telling us how we can stay in touch with you through social media, website. Great. So per personally, just Jody Davis on Facebook and Instagram. And then professionally, it's Accent Moving is what our Facebook and Instagram is, but we're Accent Moving Storage and Logistics. We're an agent for Mayflower Transit. And so we are a full service moving and storage company. And actually sometimes when you deliver, we deliver home delivery. So if you've ordered something on the internet, we may be making that delivery too. Yes, chances but are. We yes. do um, household residential, we do commercial and um, we do storage. So we're really a very full service moving and storage company that offers anything you might need when it comes to relocation. Yeah, I love it. And I have utilized them many times in the past, as I know Cheryl <laughs> has, and some of us have and always been well pleased. So Thank I just uh, want to encourage people to connect with Jody both professionally and personally. Yes. Because her posts are pretty amazing. I have to say you are pretty much a social media queen. I love Oh, your wow. Insta stories and everything You're else. So it makes funny. me feel so inadequate, but <laughs> I need to take a class though. <laughs> I think I, anybody over a certain age needs to take a class <laughs> just to stay relevant. Right. Um, but I just want to thank you for joining us today. And if you have not already subscribed to iRefresh, I just want to encourage you to do so. Our website is www.irefresh.net. And you can also find us, find us on social media. Uh, Instagram and Facebook. Thank you, Jody, for sharing. We, it was truly a blessing, and I loved hearing your story, loved hearing your testimony, loved hearing how you applied the word, how you apply um, just different things in your relationship with the Lord, work, family, volunteering. It just really blesses and encourages us. Well, thank you. I'm very honored to have the opportunity. Thank you. There was a highlight of something that you could pull out that would really encourage, edify, or empower someone 
um, what would that be? So I would just encourage everyone to find something that inspires them, a verse, a scripture verse, a song, a worship song, a quote, a poem, anything that when you're on the peak of the mountain or in the deepest valley, that you can use that in your life. You know, for me, I use Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you a future, to give you hope, not to harm you. I just really clung to that scripture. I have it in my office. I have it in my home. I have it anywhere I need it so that I can refer back to it, even though, you know, it's written on my heart as well. And so when you're going through something really difficult, I just encourage you to embrace it. Embrace the journey. Embrace what you're going through and know that the Lord walks with you, that when you come out on the other side, you know that he has been with you during those tough times. And I just, I really encourage you, instead of fighting through the dark times, through the tough times, if you'll embrace it and say, hey, I'm here for it, I'm, I'm digging in, I'm going deep, then when you come out on the other side, it'll be that much more of a victory in your life. I love that. And that is so needed and so necessary. Mom, especially to think that spirit. You know. But she said, I've moved places a lot in my life. Every new placement. <laughs>